And now we are recording. Just by the push of a button. Yeah, this is hopefully the ugliest you will ever see me. Hello guys, welcome to another time out with me on Alec GTV. If you're just meeting me for the first time, my name is Alec Godwin, and um, today we are going to review this awesome lens from Makey Mikey. Um, it's the 50 millimeters T 2.2. It's the cine lens, and in my opinion, this is the cream of the crop. Yep, coming up. All right, very quickly, I'd like to welcome you officially here. I know a lot of you, a lot more of you are uh, visitors. I'd like to really, really thank every new subscriber on this channel. Um, those of you who are here for the first time, I hope before the end of the video, you'll be able to uh, subscribe to the channel and be a part of this family. I believe uh, if you like to watch movies or if you like to make movies, then this is the channel for you. I want to point out here that I, I have a giveaway coming up because we are almost at the 2000 mark. I don't know how fast we'll get there. Um, a lot of subscribers have been coming on board and I do appreciate you guys. So I just want to get it out there now. I'm going to make a dedicated video for that. But just to give you guys heads up from my first trial the very first minutes i got in contact with this lens i tried it on i just felt the smoothness by the way i have the 16 millimeters and the 25 those were my peaks you know my choices i skipped the 35 because uh, it's a little bit taller than the others it's a great focal length but until i really need it i'm not gonna get it because I know I'm going to be in for the 85 and more. And just quickly before I forget, I want to say, use this opportunity to talk to Makey. Uh, if you can hear me right now, I'm going to make a very special request on behalf of all those who have similar desires. I love these lenses. I love your lenses, Mickey or Mikey. I love your... A lot of us love your lenses and uh, I will plead with you guys to include a zoom lens, a zoom range from for about, you know, 18 to 105 or, you know, 35 to um, 135, something like that, you know, so, so that uh, we can also have a zoom, you know, I'm a very big fan of zoom lenses, but, you know, I just had to subscribe to these lovely lenses because they are um, cine lenses and affordable and they're good, not just cheap. If we can throw in a zoom lens there, you got me and a lot of people. A lot of people. Just a word for Mickey. Alright, someone sent me um, a message to ask, well for the 16 millimeters, though, um, how smooth it is. The buttery smooth, that's, that would be the word. He also asked how how the throw was like you know can you focus with your hands yes you can but you will get um you have to get used to it because this is really really a long um focal throw it is two 270 degrees uh wide so you're it's it's not what we're used to when i I remember the last review when I did make the review for the 16 millimeters and I was trying to do the breathing test when I rack focus between two objects right here in the surface. It was shaky because I was, it was like, you know, being new to the experience, it was like, whoa, but it's smooth. But at the same time, I was like expecting to end. Now I'm pretty used to it and you know, I'll probably just start with that rack focus test. When I did it this time, it looked a lot more buttery smooth. And um, yeah, but if you want to kill it, really want to kill it and not really feel that that uh, the, the size of the focal throw, when you use uh, your Tilton Nano or your Moza Air, whatever follow focus you use, I own both, so um, I found both to be very smooth with the uh, with this scroll. So I, when I when I use those, you know, 
I just don't know when it gets to the end. You know, I even do pull it really slow, but soon I'm, I'm like, it's the end. I'm like, whoa, really? You know, but if you use your hand, it's like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> you know? You know, some people said they felt like the pictures were soft. Um, I think that was me working on the pictures, you know, which was not a good way to review. So um, apologies for that. So on this one, um, I'm going to give you the raw pictures and then I'll do some color grading just to, um, on a different time. So we'll have both both uh, pictures at the same time, just in case my color grading does not suit your eyes. So uh, you could have the raw pictures and um, if you do need any of them, downloadable uh, you can let me know and I can put a link for you to download them so you could test uh, I'll let you see the raw footage from the camera which is um, of course I'm shooting raw on the black magic um, camera um, but I use it on the black magic as well as the Sony FS5 mark 2 um, I've got an adapter uh, which you might be interested in it is from Photo Deux, and I think it is awesome. You know, for me, I know I, 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 those are my two major cameras, so I want to be able to use these lenses on them as well. But the way to go, if you have a E mount as well as a microphone third, then get the microphone third and this adapter, which is like 60 bucks or so, or 30. I can't remember. I'll put the links in the description. Um, got it from Amazon and uh, with that you can mount any of the Mikey lenses or Micro Four Thirds lenses, you know, like the uh, SLR Magic. The first thing you will notice about this is the build quality, like the first 16 millimeters. It is, it's just awesome, just solid, you know, and the size is so portable, you know, unlike most uh, cine lenses, they are very huge and, you know, like a uh, cumbersome to to mount on your rig and especially if you want to put it on a gimbal uh, for the breathing we already talked about the breathing right so okay i show you it you see that there's a like a fringing or artifact on the left side of the chair of the screen um now we want to focus on that it could be looking through the windows or you know it could be the window frame or something but let's find out what it is this is the power of the 50 millimeters focus on the chair can we let's find out what it is this is the power of the 50 millimeters now we got the chair in view but that's not what we're looking for we still see the line a little bit bigger so let's go in some more and our director wants to reveal the character that is about to take the stage. And ladies and gentlemen, it's just a wire. And let's read what's on the wire. Yes, we can read it up and forget about everything else. As those subjects turn over and pay attention to this wire, we focus on the wire because something is about to happen and this wire is now the center of the stage and the main focus and we want you to see what's written on that wire and now we see you see it you understand our story better and we can decide to focus back and see the reaction of the people looking at the wire and and why they are looking at the wire and stuff like that so it is, it is one of my best storytelling to the 50 m um, lens flare the lens flare is intact i have no problems with the flares from this lens um 90 percent of the time the flares from the lens are like usable like what i want almost like the vintage the way the vintage lenses will react to light and give you some you know lovely artifacts uh effects um yeah this does something similar it won't just blow out the picture the, the picture sort of still remains you know decent while those flares come through the glass so it's made of nine elements in seven groups and i have no problem with the picture quality this is what it looks like wide open 
you know, for example, you're on an interview, like I did an interview on my own. I did my own interview, my own recording, my own documentary. Uh, this is how I will shoot a talking head documentary, not looking at the camera, but slightly talking away from the camera. It's for close-ups and getting that uh, interview shots. We are like four or four and a half feet away from the um, lens and um, everything is looking good. This is, um, I'm shooting in Blackmagic Raw and um, this is, is going to be purely ungraded film in film format. Blackmagic Raw in film format, straight up from the sensor, raw picture, no touch, no alteration. Um, 4K DCR T 2.8 now we step down to 2.8 and um, this is how your picture will look I will do a battle of the 50s in another video where I'll compare it with the Zeiss and some other lenses but you know the, the speed is at 2.2 for me it's ideal is you know really more than ideal 2.2 is a good spot for me and I'm happy with that. I'll show you footages uh, at the end, um, towards the end of the video. I'll show you clips and uh, you can see for yourself, you know, how cool these pictures are. Lenses, the 16 and 25 and 35, um, all 75 millimeters wide. So if you are getting filters and stuff like that, um, that's how it's 75 millimeters. That's what you need to get. Right, so we will also I'll show you bouquet test as well so you so you see for yourself how well just like the others the bouquet is um, sweet and round and um, you know you could achieve it effortlessly effortlessly and it's just uh, I just have a feeling that the, the 50 millimeters is a lot smoother now what we can have this is the king of bouquet so far for the for the bunch I'm happy with this choice and I must say something you know if you for those of you who observed Mikey was coming up strong uh, I think um, black magic killed this market um, nobody saw the 6k coming and Mikey you know the black magic was a major push for this lens I know the GH5 uh, Olympus everybody else with the micro four thirds they jump on it but it was a it was majorly black magic cinema camera that jumped you know that uh, this thing was more celebrated on people sold their, their lens um, I got a 16 25 and the, I skipped the 35 simply because it's a lot bigger, it's taller, but it's the same diameter and everything. And I think the positions of this, uh, uh, I think they still kept the position in same place. I think, but if you're using a matte box, you might, you may only have to move that out. So, but I was so happy that the 50 millimeters was the same size as the others, which. Uh, um, we will do a separate review about, you know, to check uh, the pictures, how they all, you know, blend together, you know, and because uh, that's what we want. We want that continuity when you, when you put pictures together, you know. So is this highly recommended? Yes, I would highly recommend this lens. Uh, is there any con? Of course there is. Um, for me, the con, the only con I see on this lens is it is chromatic aberration. I noticed, you know, some fringing. I didn't notice on location, but I noticed during post. That's when I really noticed, um, but I didn't notice on set. And I saw, oh, I was like, oh, this is really there. But it was understandable. Um, I didn't remember to look out for it to like, you know, uh, step down. 2.8 to like 4, F4, you know, and the chromatic will be gone. You know, I think about 2.8 it should, it should become. Um, yeah, that's all I needed to do. But I think I shot that scene wide open because it was getting dark. I shot that scene wide open at 2.2. So it's not an exception. It's not something that other cine lenses don't suffer from. Now, this is in the class of lenses like six to seven times its price. You know, that's just... Uh, my quick take on this, 
this is the cream of the crop. This is the one I'm excited the most about. You know, it's just, just see how. Whoa, whoa. It's just a smooth lens. I highly recommend it. Um, if you got questions, uh, contributions, um, suggestions, or any tip you want to share um, with us, uh, go ahead and do it in the description. Put it in the description and uh, I'll be quick to respond. I'm going to be doing reviews about uh, with the 50s, like Battle of the 50s. I'll also be doing a video about with the 25 because I didn't do a review for the 25. I have not done a review for the 25. I'm not really going to do a review for the 25 because they are all really the same. It's just a 25, you know. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a comparison with the 16 and the 25. Um, two videos I'm going to do. I'm going to compare how they all match together, 16, 25, and 50. And then I'm going to do another video with the 20, 16 and 25 against the lens I'm using today, which is uh, the almighty Sigma 18. So uh, we're gonna see how well, because somebody asked the question a long time ago before I got this lens. Actually, you you inspired this lens, me getting this lens, you know. He said, he asked the question, how well does this lens stack up with this um, uh, Sigma 18 to uh, 25, 35, and I said I don't have the lens, and I was like, hmm, maybe I should. I was gonna borrow or uh, rent it, but I never renting is just a just a difficulty for me. So um, I just had to buy it. I bought it, and um, I have no regrets. It's a lovely one. I was going to go that route. I was gonna get the 50 to 100 as well. But, um, you know, when I did my comparison, which was what I'm going to show you, um, I, I decided to, you know, it was a tough one, but I, I decided to go with this family. And I'll tell you in the other video how I came to that conclusion and why. Okay, I think I said it all. Thank you guys for watching. It's been a pleasure talking with you guys. Um, don't forget to subscribe, like, and I'll see you in the next video. Straight up from the sensor, raw picture, no touch, no alteration. Um, 4K DCI, uh, raw, or raw. T 2.8 now. We step down to 2.8, and um, this is how your picture will look. And hopefully, this is the ugliest you'll ever see me.